Uh, I want to open with Jaden Bellamy. Uh, he got hurt in the game, and we had to take him to the hospital and get him x-rayed. Uh, x-rays have come back negative, so he's in route. His family did go there with him. They were at the game. He's now in route, route back here so that he can fly back home with us. And uh, we just didn't want to leave anybody behind. So I want to open with that, and uh, I'll go to questions. Emily, you can start us off. Just to follow up on, on Bellamy, x-rays, was that like a head neck injury? or? So that's the stuff that I don't want to say because he may come back and play next week, and I don't want okay. to give the the opponents any but he advantage. Is cleared from that. Okay. Anthony, I guess today, and we've been talking the last few weeks about slow starts offensively. What do you kind of feel like contributing most of that today? You know what? I want to go back and watch the tape, but uh, it's it's starting to be a theme, and uh, I'm not satisfied with that. We we have to find a way to stop that. We've got to get in these games and not get out of them. And uh, I'm a little upset about that. So we're going to go back and we will do, and I will do whatever we can to make sure that we have an opportunity to, to find a way to start faster. Jack. So coach, for these four weeks, Garrett has looked pretty uncomfortable in terms of getting rid of the ball, decision making, leaving the pocket. Why would you say that is? I don't know. We're going to have to find out. There's no uh, physical thing. You know, I mean, if that's where you're going with it, but um, I would agree. Uh, those citrus, my back down. You talked about after Florida State getting, you know, over those opponents of North Carolina, Florida State, Clemson, and then this stretch of the schedule might be a little easier on the offense. Why wasn't that the case tonight? Well, obviously, Virginia Tech's got a heck of a football team, and when you add in the crowd and the early penalties that we had, uh, you know, we settled down the second half and that crowd didn't adjust us, or maybe the crowd just got quieter. But uh, I don't have an answer for you on that, but that's a good football team. They ran the ball extremely well on us. And, uh, well, I thought both teams were physical. I mean, they had guys leave the game. We had guys leave the game. And, uh, you know, we had a lot of guys playing to the very end. I think Marlowe went over double-digit tackles again. So I don't think it was about giving up, but it was a very physical contest. Emily and Cindy. Uh, sounded from some moments on the broadcast that there was frustration on the sidelines among the players. Was that frustration with what was going on in the game, or is that frustration in any way directed at the coaching staff or other players? I don't think our family is like that. I think it's all tied into what's going on in the game, and guys wanting to have success, and winning is important. So, taking the physical kind of aspects out of the game, what is the mentality shift you want to see in your team moving forward? Well, I think the main thing is we just gotta, we've got to go out and be a little bit more aggressive. We're being aggressive on defense, but offensively, I thought there were some plays to be made. I thought you, we saw some guys making some plays out there. But to do it consistently over a long period of time, uh, you know, we haven't been able to do that. And third downs, you can't, you can't get momentum in a football game if you're not going to. You better get touchdowns or you better get first downs, one or the other. Wyatt. Coach, the defense struggled against the run, particularly on the outside, you know, uh, getting the edge and setting back. Why do you think that is, and what do you see from those? Players? I think the biggest thing is we just got to rally. We got to get more support. You know, we had we had corner support, and then we had corners doing it re really well, and then we lost both corners. And that's not an excuse. We're playing with the next guys, and they, did, they came in and did a nice job. We played a lot of guys today, but uh, it's you know that's part of the game. Sometimes the corners have to cover people, and sometimes they need to come up safeties, defensive linemen, and there's enough to go around. It's not really one position. But, uh, you know, they did some unique things. They did some unique things in the run game. Jack and Emily. Jeremiah Wilson's a guy that started for most of the early season. We saw his playing time kind of wane, and, you know, he was on the depth chart with the Greg Delane or Jeremiah Wilson. Didn't really see him today. Why was that? Uh, I, we had somebody ranked higher. You know, they were playing the guys that they wanted to play. Emily and then Anthony. At this point, four down games for the offense. Are you considering any changes to offensive personnel? Everything is open. What about, uh, are you considering bringing Beck back down from the box to the sideline where you guys had success last year with him? Uh, that I have not thought about yet. I think like the last couple of weeks we talked about Garrett saying the offense needs to find an identity and then there is an identity. And so I just want to uh, like ask, when you were looking at the table over these last couple of weeks with the bye week, what did you feel like the offensive identity was? I thought that we were missing out on plays, guys making mistakes, Rolodexing, one guy, one guy, one guy. 
and uh, you could see the clarity that if you cleaned up the mistakes that you were going to have success. And again, the same thing happened again. You had some guys, you had some plays, but you couldn't make it continuous. You couldn't keep doing it. Is that more so contributed to guys kind of being in this starting position for the first time, like especially the receivers? Uh, a lot of guys were in the starting position for the first time. I mean, we even lost an offensive lineman at halftime and had to play someone that really hadn't played a lot this year. So there's a lot of guys in there. Interesting. When you're dealing with lopsided results, as you guys have over the past few weeks, how does your message change to the guys each week to try to motivate them, whether that be before the game or at halftime coming off of these tough games? You know, motivation a lot of times is a self-motivation, OK? The main thing is when you talk to people, you need to tell them the truth. That's the main thing, because then they'll listen to you. They won't just hear what you're saying. They'll actually listen to what you're saying. So that's, that's where it all starts when you talk about motivation, telling them the truth. Take two more for Coach and start with Emily. The past few games, guys on both sides of the ball said that they felt that the game plans have been there and that it's just been execution issues. Do you think that was the case this game, and, and when does the game planning come into question when nothing seems to be working. Everything is under everything is under review after a game like this. And then why for the last question? Uh, Coach Drones was very effective in the read option. Say it again, I didn't hear. Uh, it. Drones, the quarterback, was very effective in the read option. What was the plan to kind of keep him in the pocket, and how do you feel like that uh, played out today? Well, the biggest thing is you, you keep him in the pocket by what you do with your line stunts and your linebackers. Now, that's a big old cat. And I mean, there was a couple of times we hit him and we didn't bring him down. But uh, he is, he's, he's really, really good. He's 230 pounds or something to that effect. And he, he was really, really effective running the football down there downhill. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Thank you.